guys, David here, one, two, and two, and it's list day. Ah, yes, list day. Today we're gonna be looking at the top 10 worst synchros in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Now you guys are probably wondering where top 10 best fusions are. Uh, well, I'm gonna do all the worst ones first and then do all the best ones because my name's on the building and I do what I want. Also, the worst ones are just much more fun to do. And yes, this is going to be one of those Davidator special editions. The special edition. Where I'm going back and remaking one of my older videos because their quality is something left to be desired. I was just starting. Cut me some slack. I mean, look at this. Ish. And if you could make a level 9, I bet you you could have that green screen, though. However, some of the entries on this list are going to be different than the last one. That way, the old list isn't completely obsolete, it's just different. And as always, if you guys want to get in on the list making process, please look at the link down in the description below, join that Discord, and you too can get in on all of the fun to make these things because I don't really make them personally. I have my Discord do it, and I just spot check and veto anything I think is foolish or silly because. You know, I am eventually needing to get into a front of a camera and talk about this stuff, so I don't want to sound like a ninny more than I already am. <laughs> so without further ado, top 10 worst synchro monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh! Number 10 is Signal Warrior. Signal Warrior is decidedly number 10 on this list because I think it might be the truly the best card on the list, and it is still pretty Pretty terrible. This level eight light warrior monster has the following effect. It's made of one tuner and one non-tuner. Okay, it's generic. Woat. Once per turn during the standby phases. Oh, yuck. You can place one signal counter in every face-up card in a field spell zone and this card too. Meaning if your opponent's got a field spell, you got a field spell, you get three a turn during either player's standby phase. Okay, you probably can reliably count on getting two a turn because your opponent may or may not have a field spell, but if you're playing this card in your extra deck, you are probably playing a field spell deck, presumably. It also looks like the effect wouldn't work if there is no field spells. I think by how it's working. Maybe? This card with signal counters on it cannot be destroyed by battle or your opponent's card effects. Okay, cool. It's got decent, uh, decent protection. And you know what? Uh, as long as you got a field spell on board, this will probably live because by the time your opponent can act against this card on their turn, you've had one standby phase in between the summoning and then them actually getting to do something. So yeah, okay, that protection's that protection's kind of okay. Once per turn is a soft once per turn. Hmm. You can remove signal counters from anywhere on the board in increments of four, seven, or ten, and then apply the following effects depending on how many you took. If you took four, do 800 burn damage to your opponent. Oh boy. Seven, draw a card. It's weird that there's an odd one in here because like you're probably getting two a turn. So <laughs> why is one of these an odd number? Whatever. 10. Destroy a card in the field. What's with these old cards undervaluing like drawing cards? It's always like the worst effect. I don't, whatever. Obviously the reason why this card is not very good is because all those effects are halfway decent and its own protection is okay. However, it takes you several turns in order to accrue anything useful out of this card. It's not going to live that long. At 2400 attack for a level 8, it's actually pretty weak, so it's not very strong. And it relies on you having field spell cards on the field, which means your opponent has one more option to utilize in order to disrupt this card's effect i.e. just getting rid of the field spells. All in all, it's just really, really slow. It, it itself doesn't do anything necessarily bad, it's just it takes too long to do it. Oh, here we go. Time to dump on one of my favorite decks to dump on. Blackwing! Assault Blackwing, Sayo the Rain Hider. What does that even mean? Quick, hide the rain! This level two dark wing beast synchro monster has the following effect. If this card is synchro summoned using a black wing as material, it is treated as a tuner while phase up on the field. Twice per turn, this card cannot be destroyed by battle. Okay, for those of you who do not play black wings, it might not be readily apparent why this card isn't particularly good. Number one, it only gets its full utilization in a black wing deck. Yes, it is a generic synchro monster being made of one tuner and one non-tuner. However, in order for it to be itself considered a tuner, you need to use black wings to make it. And black wings don't have a ton of great options to make a level two synchro play. It's just kind of unwieldy for that deck to use. And you have to use cards that are kind of bad that the deck doesn't normally run in order to make it. The deck much rather make things like, I think it's what, like sevens or tens. So it's just, you have to, you wouldn't make this. Plus, when you have cards like Formula Synchron as a level 2 Synchro Tuner that also has a fantastic effect, it really begs the question, why would you ever just make this thing? Other than you need a crappy defender? That's very bad. <laughs> 
Oh, I remember this one. Geogenics. Geogenics is a level six earth machine monster with the following effect. It's made of Genix controller and one or more earth monsters. All right, so it's not generic. That's already a strike against it, but okay. Once per turn, if you control another Genix level four or lower monster, you can switch this card's original attack and defense. Ooh. Traditionally, it has 1800 attack, 2800 defense, but you can turn it into a 2800 beat stick. For a level 6, that's actually pretty respectable attack power, however it requires you to have a very specific board state in order to make it, and it's made of a very specific tuner monster, one that is a level 3 vanilla, which is... that's a garnet. The, the attack and defense swap lasts until the end of the turn, as long as you control another level 4 or lower Gen X monster. Meaning, if you have a couple of main deck monsters on board and this thing, it does not keep its attack a defense swap if you decide to synchro away those other monsters. So you need to at least leave one normal dude on there so this thing can maintain its 2800 beat stick properties until the end of the turn. Wow, what a rigmarole for what you might as well have just made Goyo Guardian. <laughs> Genix aren't very good and this card exemplifies as to why because they are kind of a clumsy synchro engine and they clumsily synchro into things that aren't very good. All right, let's just keep chunking along. Number seven is Atomic Scrap Dragon. This level 10 earth dragon monster has the following effect. It's made of one scrap tuner monster and two or more non-tuner monsters. Yucks! That two or more non-tuner monster things is the doom of many synchro monsters because having three specific levels on board in order to make a synchro play is cumbersome, which means that that card should be like Trish Dragon of the Ice Barriers, where its effect is fantastic, so that it's worth the pain in the butt that it is to make, and the Inherent Nake too. This card's not like Trish. And the tuner is a specific archetype-based tuner, which means that it gets landlocked to a very specific deck already. However, unlike the Genix, at least Scraps are a pretty competent synchro engine. But anyway, let's keep going. You can select one card you control and up to three cards into your opponent's graveyard, destroy the card you control, and then shuffle those three cards in your opponent's graveyard into their deck. When this card is destroyed by your opponent, either by card effect or by battle, you can select one scrap monster in your graveyard special summon it. It has to be a non-synchro scrap monster, so no, no cutesy poo things with the scrap dragon that you made last turn or whatever. Okay, so what's so bad about this? Well, uh, it was a neg two to make, and in order to use its shuffle graveyard ability, you need to neg yourself even more. Hopefully the card you are destroying is like a scrap or something that gets its effect off while it is destroyed, meaning that you can mitigate that awful, awful effect. However, uh, shuffling three cards from your opponent's graveyard into their deck, however, it might be debilitating is certainly not the kind of effect you'd expect on a level 10 big bodied synchro monster. He's almost more worth it to play just because he's a 3200 beat stick, less because his effect is actually particularly useful. Furthermore, his card design is really weird because he must be destroyed by battle or card effect by your opponent, so you can't just pop himself to get his effect off and float into something else which would inherently let you mitigate the advantage. Cause that would actually be kind of good, or at least not crappy. But nope, your, your opponent's gotta blow it up. And why do they insist on giving, like, destroyed by battle effects to humongous monsters like this? Your opponent's gonna never be able to kill this in battle, so it might as well not even say that. I mean, 3200's big number! It's just a lot of effort to make, uh, and it doesn't really do very much. It doesn't actively destroy your opponent's board, or you have any kind of self-protection. It doesn't really do anything. It screws up your opponent's virtual advantage in their graveyard, which may or may not actually hurt their deck depending on what deck they're playing. All right, let's keep going. Number six is Iron Chain Dragon. It's really weird we have so many dragons on this list because dragons tend to be really good monsters. A level six earth dragon synchro monster that has the following effect. You can remove from play Iron Chain monsters in your graveyard to have this card gain 200 attack for each one removed until the end of the turn. <laughs> okay. When this card does battle damage to your opponent, you can mill the top three cards of their deck to the graveyard. Okay. It's made of one tuner and one non-tuner monster, so it is technically a generic. However, it gets its best effect when it's in its home deck, which is Iron Chains. Which is why it's on the list! Iron Chains are bad. It's incredibly disrespectful! They don't really have much of a cohesive strategy. Uh, it seems like it's 
probably a deck out strategy, but all of their main deck monsters don't necessarily do that. And they only have one monster that special summons one other monster, and it's not the tuner necessarily. So it's particularly clumsy to make this. Furthermore, the one that summons a monster is a level four and the tuner is a level three. So you can't even like have the tuner in the graveyard. The deck it's four has a hard time making it. That's really all I should probably have to say. <laughs> and the banishing stuff from the graveyard kind of ruins your graveyard setup for the main deck monsters effects. It, there's a lot, there's a mess going on here. Also that you can hope to hit your opponent for, the, for to help them set up their graveyard. Oh. At least 2,500 attack is pretty modest. All right, top five, you guys ready? Ally of Justice, Field Marshal. More like ally of your opponent because you're doing him a favor by so many. This dark level nine machine synchro monster has the following effect. It's made of one tuner and two or more non-tuners. Ooh, yikes. And this one's especially stupid, unlike uh, Atomic, because it's a level nine. So the Trish analogy is 100% one to one. <laughs> Why would you not make Trish a uh, Ruin my opponent's strategy or lose? Anyway, what does it do? This card could not be special summoned except by Synchro Summon. Oh, why does it need that restriction? Meaning if it dies, you can't get it back. Sucks to be you. When this card destroys a face down monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, draw a card. <laughs> why didn't you just make Trish? You could have banished the stupid thing. Okay, if your opponent has monsters in face down to vent's position, one of two things are happening right now. One, you're winning, they're losing. You're making a humongo beat stick out of your extra deck as a win more move, you jerk. You could have probably just OTK'd them or whatever, or you just made Trish. Or two, your opponent is playing a cheesy, janky flip effect deck, and they want you to crash into that stupid thing because it's Maneater Bug. Okay, so many cards can be killed by a flipped up Maneater Bug. We all know that. But this card is something special because it actively goes out of its way to smash into that Maneater Bug to force its effect because that's what it does. It has to do that. That's why you make it. It's a good thing it draws a card to mitigate the fact that you just lost a monster that took three cards to make. <laughs> and you could have just banished the man-eater bug with the Trishula. This spot could have also been uh, Gazer because Gazer is just a stupid beat stick, but he was on the last list, I'm pretty sure. So let's, let's, let's beat on this guy too because they're both real bad. Shiranui Saga. Oh, here we go. A card that had so much going for it that shouldn't be bad. This fire level five zombie synchro monster has the following effect. You can only special summon a zombie land saga once per turn. Here I go! If this card is special summoned, you can change the battle position of a monster on the field. <laughs> what year is it? That's so, this card's not even old. This is so bad. And it's a zombie. And it can only be special summoned once per turn. So it's like, they know, they know that you're a zombie player. So all you're doing is special summoning dead shit from your graveyard. And they're like, nah, you can't do that with this thing. Sucks to be you, kid. And God knows why, because Letting you special summon this thing a bunch of times from the graveyard wouldn't do it. What are you gonna do? Put a couple of guys in defense position? Who cares? If this card is banished, you can special summon a, a, like a level one zombie token. That effect is a hard once per turn. Why is this card so restricted all over the place? I get the token. I get the token. We lost Steam the Stormcloak. Stormcloak. You but face. Steam the cloak because it's a, a tuner and it just gets a free token. It replaces itself. That's just too good with link monsters and stuff. Uh, he does a very similar thing, but it's on a banish, which is already weird for you to have to do. You'd have it only really works in his own deck if you can banish him to get an effect off or whatever. But it's it's a hard once per turn, so you you can't loop it. So the only reason why we care about him special summoning once per turn is for his sideways effect, and that is just so bad. It doesn't even book a moon in it. Just puts it in defense position. Okay, no, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, here's a bad card that's old, so at least it can it has a reason to be bad, unlike the last one. Magical Android, which is a weird thing to think about it. Androids are like human-like robot kind of things made by technology, and this thing's magical. However, uh, if technology is sufficiently advanced, it is indistinguishable from magic, so... There is always that. <laughs> what, is she, what, what is it anyway? Level five light psychic. Okay, cool. Because of why, what else would it be? One tuner, one non-tuner. Yes, generic. 
it's at least summonable. That, that's that's a start. During your end phase, oh oh no. Gain 600 light points for each psychic monster you currently control. Wow. Okay, so psychic monsters tend to pay life points for costs, I guess. At least they did back in the day. That's why they have that like field spell that like soaks it up for them or whatever. Maybe the idea was that you summon this thing to help mitigate the. That is so bad. It's got 2,400 attack, so it's got modest attack power for a level five. The only reason it probably ever saw play was because I think this came out towards the beginning of the synchro era, so you probably just didn't have better options for a level five synchro play. It's a beat stick. You can use it with honest though. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Now its only function is the trolley. Uh, play it during your main phase two when there's almost time in the round and let its effect just win you the duel <laughs> It's like a reverse cowboy for game pretty pretty bad, but it's at least funny Number two is thunder unicorn this level five light beast monster has the following effect it's made of a one beast type tuner and one non-tuner monster, so it's not generic. Once per turn, you can wonder to yourself why this is not a thunder type monster. <laughs> Once per turn during your main phase, you can target one monster your opponent controls that loses 500 attack for each monster that you control until the end of the turn. That's not good. If you use the effect, this is the only card that can attack that turn. Wow. They really needed to restrict this. It lets you get over a beat stick. 2200 attack power is modest, I suppose, but not great. Dual links. I've summoned it in dual links. Alright, let's talk about some honorable mentions, or rather, dishonorable mentions, because they're the least shitty. Malefic Paradox Dragon! Come forth! Holy raw! I've seen a lot of dragons in my time, but that one takes the cake! And he probably ate it too! Shut up, Jaden! This level 10 dark dragon has the following effect. You make it with Malefic Parallel Gear as its tuner. It, that is way ungeneric. It, it, it gives you the tuner you need to make it with. Plus one non-tuner malefic type monster. Wow, <laughs> you can't even use two, you can only use one. And it's gotta be a malefic. Wow, they just really don't want you to summon this thing in anything else other than its main deck. When this card is synchro summoned, you can select a synchro monster in either player's graveyard and special summon it. You can only have one face up uh, malefic paradox dragon and if malefic world's not on the field look at all the pretty lights stop being impressed by the malefic world that's their field spell you destroy this card okay so there's a lot a lot to unpack <clears throat> it's not on the list as an honorary number 11 because with the new malefic uh paradox gear it's at least pretty easy to put on board in a malefic deck because i'm if i have memory is serving me correctly paradox gear summons Parallel gear. Parallel gear lets you synchro summon with a material in your hand. And if you're running Malefics, you probably have the field spell on board because it's a Malefic deck. They center around a field spell. Issue is they center around a field spell, not their field spell necessarily. And there's like better field spells to run in that deck than their own. And that's a whole other can of worms I don't really feel like getting into. And it's also got 4k attack and defense. So it's big number. That's not the hardest thing to make. And it's huge. It's just landlocked in a bad deck. Malefics are a weird deck that, like, they are kind of like kaijus where you can only really have one of them on the board at any given time. So, like, synchroing is a weird thing for that deck to be trying to do when you really can only have one monster on board at a time. <clears throat> probably why you're allowed to synchro material in your hand, but whatever. Which means you're probably not doing very many synchro plays, so you're probably relying on your opponent to have synchro monsters in their graveyard in order to use this thing's first effect in order to... To, to steal a guy, and that's requiring you to play against a specific opponent, which is bad in Yu-Gi-Oh! It's wonky. It would be on the list had it not been just huge. No homo, right? All of the homo! And kind of easy to make in its bad deck it's for. Protagonist! Thank you so much guys for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to Metamat's website, use my code TROLLMETA at checkout. You can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. All right, guys, you ready for number one? Because I know I am. I got to give my Discord credit because I don't think I'd ever even seen this card before. And it's really bad. Psychic Nightmare. It's effects of Nightmare. <laughs> this level six Psychic Wind monster has the following effect. Made of one tuner and one or more non-psychic type monsters as, as the non-tuner material. 
Okay, so it's semi-generic. In a psychic deck, that's not the worst thing in the world because that deck is a, they tend to be synchro spam decks. So probably not a restriction. Once per turn, during your main phase, pick one random card in your opponent's hand and call what type of card it is, monster, spell, or trap. If you call it right, this card gains a thousand attack power until the end of your opponent's next turn. Yes, big number. That would make a 3,400 attack, and that's nothing to shake a stick at. And in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, you probably call a monster, probably get it right. Okay, cool. The biggest thing with this card is that its effect is extremely lackluster, and it's kind of accidentally okay simply because you get to look at your a card in your opponent's hand and get some information. But that's clearly not the point of the card. The point of the card is to make big number. <laughs> you better be making this just a punch for Leovol because that's, uh, uh, you opted to not make a better card when you decided to make this thing. At least its artwork's kind of neat. All right, guys, that was the top 10 worst single monsters in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think of the list and if there's anything that you think should have been on here instead. Trust me, there was a, there was some battle in that Discord, so there was definitely some other contenders that, that could have been like 11s, 12s, and 13s on here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click the little bell if you want to be alerted by the next one, which would be, uh, Worst XC Monsters, which that one should be fun. You know, subscribe and click the bell so you can, you can get that one, because that one's going to be funny. I like that one. That one's going to be cool. And remember, guys, if you don't troll the battle who will, I will see you guys next time. Wait just a moment. I can see you were about to click the subscribe button. Was I right? Tell me I was right. I was right, right? My Millennium Eye lets me see everything, including these other videos by Davy Boy. Don't be a stranger. You will always be welcome in my Toon World.